So, so let's back up, right, and remind ourselves of the context of what we're about to discuss. So this whole chapter has been solutions. And solutions are homogeneous mixtures. And mixtures, by definition, have to consist of at least two parts, right? And so for the purposes of what we're talking about here, we're going to label one, at least one of those parts, right, as the solute. And the solute or solutes is always the lesser quantity, right? The, the le whatever it is in your mixture, the one there's less of, that's the solute. So the lesser quantity. There we go, right? And then, of course, there's our solvent. And the solvent is always the greater quantity. Now, for reasons that we sort of talked a little bit about earlier, right? When a solution is made, energy is lost. And when energy is lost, everything moves a little bit closer together. So when we do calculations of concentrations of these things, we don't really use the quantity of the solvent, right? We always use the quantity of the whole solution when we're done. But let's back up a little bit further from that. What is a concentration? Well, if you recall, we stated that solutions can have variable composition. That's not good. Right? Variable composition, which means you can have various quantities of solute dissolved in your solvent. Okay? And the way we keep track of that, right? obviously, you can totally saturate it, which is what we call a saturated solution, right? or the solubility of it. And when, <clears throat> But any other time that it's not saturated, we need a way of keeping track of how much solute is in the solvent. Right? And that is... That way we keep track, right? It's a concentration. Keep track, quantitate, right? So concentration is is a quantity. Quantity of solute per quantity of solution because as I mentioned a second ago right necessarily if you add in most in some especially we talk about volume right when you're adding the volume of the solute and the volume of the solvent that doesn't necessarily mean that's the volume of the solution mass wise yes though right and so why do I bring up mass and volume well of course we know all matter has mass and volume. And since all matter has mass and volume, those are particularly convenient units to measure with, right? Because all, all pieces do, right? Everything has mass and volume, so we can measure it. So why do I bring this up? Well, we've talked a little bit about concentration so far uh, in terms of moles. Uh, and, and that's useful, obviously, as chemists, right? So we talked a little bit about before, one type of concentration is molarity. And molarity is moles of solute per liters of solution. Okay. And that's really useful in that context, like when we're doing... Um, stoichiometry or something, right? Let's say we've got a calculation here, uh, two NaOH uh, <clears throat> reacting with H2SO4 to produce two H2Os plus uh, Na2SO4, right? These numbers are either individual molecules or moles, depending on the context we're looking at, right? So if we want to talk about um, using stoichiometry, like let's say I have X number of moles, let's say, I don't want to go too far down this trail, but just for fun, right? Let's say I have 0 0.5 moles, right? Or molar, I should say, just 
realized I just painted myself into a corner. 0 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide, and I wanted to know how much sodium hydroxide I would need to neutralize 1.0 moles of H2SO4. Well, molar means moles per liter, right? And I have a balanced equation here. So if I have one mole of this for every two moles of this, because we've done this in this class right here, you've all watched it and done it with me, right? One mole of this for every two moles of this, I said, okay, if I want to find out how much of this I need, well, I know that it's 0 0.5 moles of NaOH per liter of solution. And so I know I'm going to need two moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize one mole of this. So without getting too crazy with the calculations, I can look at this here and say, all right, if I've got one mole of this, 1.0 moles H2SO4, and I know that it's one mole of H2SO4 for every two moles of NaOH, right? Then I'm going to need two moles of NaOH equals two moles of NaOH. And then I can multiply that by this to find out the volume of NaOH that I'm going to need, right? If I do the reverse of that, so I put a little equal sign here just so we can illustrate this, right? Two moles of sodium hydroxide is what I'm going to need. So I can take this molarity ratio and write one liter over 0 0.5 moles of NaOH. And of course, those cancel out, and that gives me the volume in liters of my NaOH solution that I'll need to do this calculation. Now, why do I bring this up? It's not the topic of exactly what we're talking about today, per se, because we're going to use other units, mass and volume. But the reason we have molarity concentration is for calculations like this, whereas the reason we have the other concentration calculations that we're going to talk about today are for other contexts. Right? So as we go, so let's back up, right? It's a unit of concentration. It's a ratio. And just like everything we've done in this class, if you have a ratio, it's a way to convert from one set of units to another. Okay? So, as I mentioned earlier, right, all matter has mass and volume. And sometimes you don't necessarily know how many moles of something there are, right? You might not actually know what the molar mass of whatever this, this uh, thing that you're interested in is. So you don't really know how many moles there are there, but you can certainly weigh it, right? And if you can weigh it, you can determine the mass. If you can determine the mass, then you can determine another form of concentration called, wait for it, percent by mass, right? And percent by mass for a particular compound is a fairly straightforward calculation. The percent by mass is the mass of your solute divided by the mass of your solution times 100 percent because of course it's percent by mass right so times 100 percent so you say okay right mass of the solution well uh what's the mass of the solution right well all matter has mass it takes up volume and mass can neither be created nor destroyed so even if the volume of our solution changes, as we mentioned earlier, right, because the energy is lost and everything gets closer together when energy is lost, the mass never changes because matter can neither be created nor destroyed, right? So the mass of our solution is the mass of our solute plus the mass of our solvent. Right? That's what the whole can neither be created nor destroyed. It's just because you mixed them together doesn't mean that they don't have mass anymore. Okay? And so you say, all right, well, that's pretty straightforward, right? If I just weigh one and then I weigh the other, I add the two together and divide the solute by the mass of the solution and multiply it by 100%, and that's it. And to that I say you're absolutely correct. That is exactly what we're going to do. But we're not going to weigh it, right? It'll already be all weighed out for you, but you do the calculations. So let's say, for example, right, we have a glucose concentration. So yesterday we were talking about um, osmosis, right? We were talking about how it affects blood cells. So often when somebody is very um, malnourished, they 
put an IV drip into them. And the IV drip typically contains glucose because glucose is what powers all the cells in your body. And I'm sure most of you are taking some sort of biology that can concur this, right? And if you have it, you will. So let's say you want to determine a certain quantity of glucose in the IV drip so you don't end up with a hypertonic or hypotonic solution like we talked about yesterday, which is more detrimental than starving, frankly. And so you're asking, I'm reading this, I'm sorry, I'm the things that I can remind myself, right? What is the percent mass concentration of a solution that has 5.5 grams of glucose? Now notice I'm not writing any chemical formula because it don't matter, we just want to know the mass. It's percent mass, right? It doesn't say anything about the formulas here. 5.5 grams of glucose and 78.5 grams of water. Right? Now we've been talking about this plenty. Which one's the solute? The glucose, right? It's the lesser quantity. The glucose is the lesser quantity, and the mass of the solution then will be the sum of these two. So if you want to calculate the percent glucose by mass for this particular uh, solution, right? We're going to have 5.5 grams of our glucose divided by 5.5 plus 78.5 grams, obviously both grams, right? Times 100%. And that'll give us the percent glucose by mass. So you all have calculators out and you need to write on and write with. So I'll give you a moment to do that calculation. And you can tell me what that is. And then we can use it. What's uh, what's this number right here? Eighty-four. Thank you. Eighty-four point. It's just eighty-four, right? Yep. Eighty-four point zero. So um, <clears throat> grams, right? And so one divided by the other. What does that give us times one hundred percent? Six point five. Six point five percent. Thank you. Percent. And because we're talking about something specific, we need. A, two things specific. Number one, the solute is specific, right? but also the way we determine this percentage is specific. And so we need to indicate that when we write this, we can't just write 6.5% because what if we measured volumes, right? That would be a different number. So we use it by mass, so we say glucose by mass. Or sometimes it's shorthand, it says mass percent glucose. Same thing, we have to indicate what the solute is, <coughs> just like we do with molarity, and that we're measuring it with mass. Cool. All right, so say you're administering to this patient, right? This solution is 6.5% by mass, and the doctor tells you that the patient needs uh, 200, what do we use here, grams? 200 grams of glucose. And you want to find out why well, I need to give them a certain quantity of this particular solution. How do I find out what the mass of the solution is that I should give it? Well, you've got a ratio now, right? 6.5% percent, as I'm sure we're all well aware at this point, means divided by 100. So if we rewrite this as 6.5% glucose by mass, what we mean is 6.5 grams of glucose per 100 grams of our solution. And now you've got a ratio that you can use to determine the question, right? So the question is, if the doctor tells you you need to give this person 200 dot grams of glucose, how much of this solution am I going to need to administer? Well, I know because it's 6.5% by mass. It says on the bag of what I made earlier that I'm going to need for every 100 grams of our solution, there's going to be 6.5 grams of glucose. Right? Grams of glucose cancel. I do my math, and you all tell me how much of this solution we need to administer.
Well, what's 200 times 100 divided by 6.5? Uh, 3,075.92. Okay. Okay. That's the same thing. What's that do? 200 times 100. What did I say? That no, I, didn't, I don't know. I'm just looking at my numbers. Don't look. <laughs> well, it's correct. There's okay, 6.5 cool. glucose. If they need 200 grams of glucose, that's how, I mean, there's only 6.5 grams per 100 mil, 100 grams of solution. So what is it? Three thousand. It's grams of solution, right? That's like yeah. three liters of a very dilute solution. Okay. Right, it's only six point five grams of glucose per one hundred grams of water. That's six point five percent. It's not very concentrated. Three Well, it's but it's also water, mostly water, right? So whatever. I made up these numbers. The okay. point is that's what it would be, and that's how you calculate it. Recognize if they're starving, they're probably also, you know, dehydrated. So it doesn't matter. I'm not a doctor, but I do know how to do calculations like this. And I'm teaching you that part. You can go on to another class where you learn the more doctory parts, right? But, so what is it? 3,076.92. So you got three sig figs there. So 3.76, uh, or I'm sorry, I didn't convert it to kilograms. So 3,000. 76 zero grams, right? Or uh, 3.76 kilograms. 3.076. Oh. oh. Okay, so it's 3080. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The correct sig figs. So 3.080 kilograms. If you want to convert to that, whatever. Right? A kilogram is a liter, three liters of water. Three liters of solution, excuse me. Right? It's not pure water. That would be bad. Right? That would create a hypotonic solution and then the cells would all burst and that would suck for that poor person. And then you would probably be fired. This is something that's totally possible. You might do this, all right? So let's do this again. Let's look at another one here. Let's say um, we need to make a, I don't know, IV bags are the quickest thing I can think of. Oh, here's one that we did before, right? So let's say you've got uh, a, a solution that's 0 0.80 milligrams of acetaminophen, which I'm just going to write as AC, right? That's it, per 80 grams, nope, 80 milligrams of our solution. Okay, so this is a, this is a ratio. This is what we have here, right? And I tell you, you have a, a 14 pound child, okay? And you're supposed to have something like, I forgot, I almost forgot what it was, but let's just say it's something along the lines of about one gram per pound of body weight for that child. That's the amount that the child should have of the acetaminophen, one gram of acetaminophen per one pound. Right? One pound of body weight. And I tell you that the kid's 14 pounds. So how could we use this situation? Well, first off, this is in grams. Right? This is in milligrams. <clears throat> Four, one gram of acetaminophen. Right? This is the acetaminophen part we're talking about. So we can use it like we can with every other sort of unit conversion situation. So here's my measurement. The kid's 14 pounds. I'm administering acetaminophen because he's in agonizing pain or whatever, right? One uh, pound, you know, I'm so not used to writing LB, but that's what it is, right? Pound. Lowercase b per pound? Who's ridiculous? Lowercase. Anyway, one, 14 pounds. That's the weight of the child, right? And we know that it's one gram of acetaminophen for every one pound of body weight. So we would write one pound. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, one pound for every one gram of acetaminophen. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we converted it to grams of acetaminophen, but we need milligrams of solution, right? Which means we obviously can't use these units. We're going to have to convert this to, to uh, milligrams, so one gram. 1,000 milligrams. We can, of course, all look this up. 
because it's in the back of the periodic table that everybody's supposed to have in your deal, but whatever, here it is, right? So grams, we converted that to milligrams, and then this ratio, right, of mass to mass here, we can use this to determine the number uh, or the milligrams of solution that you need to give to this uh, child, right? So this is now milligrams of acetaminophen. So we write 0 0.80 milligrams of acetaminophen for every 80 milligrams of our solution, right? And we do our dimensional analysis here. The grams cancel milligrams of acetaminophen cancel and we end up with milligrams of solution right mass to mass here and that tells you how much you need to give the chart which is something like that this is the part where all of you take out your calculators that i said to take out earlier and type in 14 times 1000 times 80 divided by 0.80 because I honestly don't know. I just totally changed this from a totally different problem. I have no idea what the answer is. solution right and if we divide that into grams that's what six four four hundred grams solution. that's excessively high but it doesn't matter again it's extremely dilute solution right whatever the point is the calculation is still the same <laughs> that's funny. Um, the calculation is still the same what do we have we have solute and a solution they're by mass and we can use them to do this calculation now obviously if you're working with children you probably have something that's significantly more precise than this but that's not the point the point is you would do the calculation exactly the same way i had two young children and have recently been in the doctor's office multiple times because they were small and that's what you do when they're small and i've watched nurses do calculations like this right then they check it versus a chart somewhere is not an unrealistic thing you would do this yes right? why didn't we do the percent glucose or the percent biomass for this no reason it's just the first thing come to my mind i just thought to do that i'm sorry oh. i actually had a i had another plan and then i thought oh let's try this one and then i recognized oh because we just talked about percentage okay. but we could also calculate that so let's go back so since you bring that up that was probably my original plan and then because sometimes when you stand up in front of people you have to change the plan quickly so let's calculate the percent by mass for this we can make these calculations, the same calculations, but a little bit simpler, right? So 0 0.80 milligrams of acetaminophen and a 80 milligram solution times 100%, that would give you a percent by mass, which is 1%. 1 1.0%. Acetaminophen by and you're right, I can be really specific here. I should put a little dot there, because you're right. Acetaminophen by mass, 1% acetaminophen. So that actually kind of explains why we have to do so much of the solution. That's terrible. Could you imagine? 1% acetaminophen by mass, right? Oh my God, can you imagine getting up? Actually, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, most of you probably aren't parents, right? But kids drink a lot of milk you could probably give a pound of milk pretty easy or a pound of this to a kid pretty easy if you mix it in with some kind of formula or milk or something anyway that's neither here nor there the point is right we have a way of calculating this to make um, a, a, a unit that's useful to us where we could just weigh out whatever it is 
You don't have to do a bunch of chemistry. You don't have to even identify what it is. You just say, okay, it tells me it's 6.5% of the thing I'm interested in by mass. That means, or 1% in this case, right? That means that for every 100 grams of this solution, there's gonna be 6.5 grams of what I want. And then I could do my unit conversion from there. So here's an example, right? Let's say you've got, let's use another example. So it says, how many grams of glucose must be added to 275 grams of water to prepare? So we've got 275 grams of water. Okay, and we want to add glucose to that to make to make a five percent glucose by mass solution. Right, so we want to make a five percent glucose by mass solution. I just realized I covered that equation. So, this seems like a lot of random stuff until you remember what the equation is, right? The equation to determine percent by mass is mass of our solute divided by the mass of our solvent, excuse me, solution times 100%, okay? Well, what do we have here? <clears throat> that's that's part of the solution, right? We want to find out what the mass of the solute is, or we know the total answer to this, right? Five point zero zero percent. Well, we know the mass of the solution is the mass of our solute plus the mass of our solvent. And the only two things we really know here, right, are the mass of the solvent and the percent by mass of the solution. And this is where you have to use a little bit of algebra, right? Because what is the one thing we don't know? The quantity of glucose, right, or x in this case. That's what we'll call it, x. So if we rearrange this thing and call the mass of glucose x, and we just rewrite this like so, and isolate x on one side and do a little math, uh, a little math, right? What you're saying, oh, this is, and this used to trip me up too when I was an undergrad. Don't do it. I was, I know it sounds crazy, right? But I was once in a community college as an introductory chemistry student as well. I've done this exact same thing. I know what you're thinking. This part seems crazy. If we divide both by 100, both sides by 100, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to make this into, uh, into 0 0.05. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 100. Why can you do that? Because if you're in mathematics, if you do something to one side, you do it to the other side, it's still equal to each other, as long as you do the same thing to both sides. So we're going to divide both sides by 100 to get rid of this all percentage thing. Okay, so now what you've got is x divided by x plus, and we know the number here, so I'm just going to put the number in because it's the mass of the solvent. So simplify things, 275 grams, right, equals 0 0.05. Okay, now this is a much more manageable situation, right, because you're like, oh, okay, well, this is smaller numbers. So now we're going to do what's called cross-multiplying, take all this uh, and multiply both sides by it. We multiply both sides, this cancels, and over on this side we get x plus 275. Then we want to get the x's on one side, and we clearly can't do that with the current situation, so we're going to multiply this through, right, and make this 0.0500x plus, uh, let's just do the math. What is this number times 0 0.05? Just, I don't want to write, write, write the same thing over and over again. Let's just do the math on that. 13.75. How much is it? 13.75. Thank you. 13.75. Yep. 
cool. All I did was multiply the 0 0.05 times this. Or actually, Josh did it for me. Thank you. Okay, so now we simplified it even further because what do we have here? Now all we have is x on this side, and then this term times x in that. Just put all the x's on one side. All right? <clears throat> so put all the x's on one side, we have to subtract 0 0.0500x from both sides, and we get x minus. 0.0500x equals 13.75 grams. We factor out the x and divide both sides. All right? So we take x out of here, we get x times 1 minus 0.0500. Right? Uh, and that's going to be equal to And I'm running out of room here, so I'm just going to switch the whole thing over x is equal to the mass of our glucose, which is equal to 13.75 grams divided by, what is 1 minus, actually whatever, I know that, 0 0.9500, uh, what's that number, right? Because 1 minus 0 0.05 is 0.95, right? 0.95, I'm sure. Right? So what's this minus divided by that? That's the mass that we should have. Notice by the way that grams carries here. There's no grams down here. If there was grams, that would be unitless, which means we didn't actually solve the problem, right? We should have said grams, how many grams. So what's that number? 14.4. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Let me just write it first yeah. while, so I don't forget. Go ahead. I lost you when you did the. I'll just let you finish. Why can't I spell? I heard what you said. I will answer it directly. What part exactly? I just lost you right there. When you did from there and then went. To, where'd you get the one for the minus? Huh, because the x, it's implied that there's a one there. One times x. Because otherwise it wouldn't be an x, right? There'd be nothing there. What? Well, the, it, there is nothing there. We don't know what it is. No, no, no. How do you know there's a one in front of it? Like there has to be at least one x. Anything times one is itself, right? Like two times one is two, and yeah, four I times know. one is four. One times x is x. No, I get. I just don't know. Where, okay. The the point is, if I remove the x out here, right, so that I make this, it's the same as saying. This right here, right, is the same as saying uh, multiply x by 1 and x by 0 0.05. So that's what these are. And so I just rearranged it so the x was out here so that I could isolate the x. Is that an x next to the point? Yeah, that's x. That's two x's then. Yeah, that's why we put it over on this side, right? Because here's x. Okay. And I put it over on this side so we can factor out the x alone so that we can solve the problem. took this and I subtracted it from both sides to put it over here, which is why this is negative, right? And then what this effect is, I mean, in mathematics you typically don't write the one, but it's implied that it's there. And the reason why is if I fact, so x times 1 minus 0 0.05 times x is the same thing as saying x times parentheses 1 minus 0 0.05. 0 0.05, right? So I just rearrange this to put the x over here so that I could solve the problem. I rearranged it, they call it factored out, right? So I took these two, I took these x's, and since I have it here and it's all in parentheses, it's the same thing as if I multiplied this by each of these. But mathematically speaking, because I put the x over here, I can now divide all that out. We can talk about it more in office hours if you want, but that's um, that's what you would need to do. So the point of this question was, I need to make a 5% solution. I got 275 grams of water to deliver this into. How much glucose do I need to make a 5% solution? Right? And so we know that this is the equation, right? Um, mass of solute divided by mass of solution. 
<clears throat> and since the solution is made up of the solute and the solvent, I just plug in x's and solve for that. A little bit of fairly straightforward algebra. And we can do it many more times if you're so inclined. The good news is the other two versions of, oh yeah, Jake, go ahead, sorry. That's it. That's a very good question. Uh, it would be three, but we were just going along doing the math, so I just wrote down what was written down. If we were being more correct about it, right, this should be uh, 14.5. Because our only actual measurement here is this one. Thank you for asking. You're all correct. I was not paying attention to. At the end, we should have rounded that to three significant figures. Cool. All right. So, back to what I was mentioning. The good news is the other two versions of concentration that we're going to talk about right now are basically exactly the same thing, except we use volume and mass and volume. All right? So, there are two more. And we're going to just play around that a little bit, and then we're going to do the worksheet. Right? Be pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> so, where are we going? Oh, there it is, right? So, number one was molarity we were looking at, right? Molarity is good if you're doing... Molarity is good if we're doing calculations uh, in terms of moles, but most of the time, if you don't know what the substance is, you have no idea how many moles there are there, right? But all substances have mass and volume, and so another way that we can use this, uh, we can determine concentration is by mass. And unsurprisingly, since all substances have mass and volume, another way we can determine it is by volume. Right? So we can determine percent by volume. And unsurprisingly, the mass one is really good when you have something that you can weigh out on a balance, right? Typically a solid of some kind. But by volume, right, often things you're mixing together are liquids. And so it's nicer to actually measure the volume. And also, unsurprisingly, the equation is almost identical, right? So it's the volume of our solute divided by the volume of the solution for all the reasons we talked about before. Now, here's the deal. In the mass one, because mass cannot, mass, percent by mass, because mass can neither be created nor destroyed, we just add up the mass of the solute and the solvent, and we say that's what the mass of the solution is. But with volume, because of what I talked about earlier, right, when energy is lost, everything gets closer together, the volume of the solute and the volume of the solvent are not necessarily, and often are not, the volume of the solution. So you need to actually measure the volume of the solution at the end. You couldn't do a calculation like what we just did by mass with volume, because there's, there's, no, there's you'd have too many variables involved, right? The volume of the total solution is gonna be different. So this thing times 100%. <coughs> right, it's the volume of your situation. So again, the volume of your solution you have to measure, right? It's not adding up the volume of the solute and the volume of the solvent. Okay, so let's say I say you're making a, uh, you're dissolving 5.00 milliliters of ethanol <coughs> into 100.00 milliliters to make excuse me, I should say, to make 100 milliliters of solution, right? What would be the percentage by volume of ethanol in that solution? Well, the volume of our solute, right? Which one's the solute? The solution is, you know, water, I should say, mixture of water and ethanol, right? But it's obviously, even if you didn't know that, it's obviously the ethanol because it's way less than everything else, right? So you're gonna write 5.00 milliliters of your ethanol, ETOH is just shorthand for ethanol. If you go on to take Chem 30B and learn a little bit about organic chemistry, which by the way, I highly suggest doing, even if it isn't required for your nursing program, because nurses are going to deal with organic beings, right? And to learn a little bit about organic chemistry and biochemistry would be infinitely helpful for you. That's your uh, solute divided by 100 
0.00 milliliters of your solution times 100%. Even I can do this math in my head. Obviously, that's going to be a 5.00% ethanol solution by volume. So again, you need to indicate that it's by volume because this is going to be different than uh, your percent by mass, right? Because the ethanol mass is going to be dependent on its constant, its density, and ethanol is much less dense than water, so that the mass of the ethanol is going to be significantly less than five, uh, five grams, right? It's going to be less. So you need to indicate that you're doing by volume. Okay. Let's do one problem with that, and then we'll go on to the next one. Yes. No, that's what I'm trying to say, right? So let's make this perfectly clear, because I want to make sure everybody understands this idea. Unlike the masses, which can neither be created nor destroyed, volume depends on energy. And when you lose energy, volume decreases. Okay? For most things, volume decreases. And so volume of your solution is not equal to the volume of your solute plus the volume of your solvent. Right? It'll almost never be that case where it's the sum of those two. You need to measure it in some sort of flask at the end or a graduated cylinder or something. You've actually done this. The first two labs that we did here, when you were determining the volume of, for the density of your sugar solution and your salt solution, right? we measured it in a graduated cylinder what the volume was at the end. We didn't add the total volume of all the sugar and the total volume of all the water that we added. We just mixed it all together and then you measure the volume and that's what you use for your density. Right? The reason for that now we're far enough along to explain is because as things lose energy by making a solution, the volume changes, usually decreases. But whatever it is, it's not the same as the sum of those two. So we cannot calculate it the way we just did with the mass. Right? The mass has its own special thing. The volume, not so much. The volume changes. Mass can neither be created nor destroyed. Therefore, the sum of those two masses is the mass of the whole solution but the volume changes depending on the temperature and on the amount of energy that's lost all that fun stuff okay so it changes so it can we have to only measure the end it's a very good question thank you for bringing that up so let's uh so what is the percent volume i'm running out of room here what is the percent volume of acetone right so acetone and it's a nail polish remover and an aqueous solution. So we've got 75 milliliters of acetone. Okay, and we're going to dilute it to 785 milliliters of solution. That doesn't really matter what we dilute it with, but we're going to use water, let's just say. And so I want to know what is the percent by acetone by volume, right? What is the percent acetone by volume? Well, we've got a calculation up there, right? We have a, an equation that we would use to do this with. <clears throat> Unlike with the mass, there's really only one way you could do it, right? And that is the percent, it would be the amount of acetone, the volume of acetone, 75 milliliters, divided by the volume of the solution, which is 785 milliliters, times 100%. And again, solute divided by solution, right? It's always gonna be solute divided by solution, whether it's mass or volume. So, what's that number? 9 9.6. 9.6. 9.6 percent acetone by volume. I've said this plenty of times, I'm just going to say it again, right? These are things you must write at the end or nobody has any idea what it is that you capture. Right? One of the student learning objectives for this class is to be able to communicate your results effectively. If you do 
not put acetone in volume, then you are not communicating them because nobody has any idea what you calculated. And you might think, again, that that's because I'm being a stickler because I'm a chemist, but I, again, many of you will go on to be nurses, and I would really like my nurse to be able to communicate effectively to the doctor when something is happening, right? Someday I will get really old, I'm already old, but I'll be really old and I might have to do some more medical stuff. So, or be involved in it. That's a patient, unfortunately. Right, so that's the percentage. So what does that mean? Well, let's say you need to make a liter of this stuff, okay? How much of this, uh, not a liter, sorry. Yeah, no, no, I need a liter of this stuff. How much acetone? do I need to add to make a liter of this 9.6% by volume solution? Well, what do we know about percent? Whenever we write percent, what does that mean? Right, but specifically in this case, if it's percent by volume, that means divided by 100. Solution, that's what I'm trying to get at here, right? 100 milliliters of solution. You're absolutely right. Of course, it's 100 milliliters, right? Or liters, actually, it doesn't make a difference because it's a ratio. So if you're going really large, you could just write liters, the same thing. <clears throat> but what's most important, it's solution. So if I have, if I want 1,000 milliliters of my solution, and it's 9.6% acetone by volume, right? then I need to find out how much acetone I'm going to need to add. And the way I do that is because this is 9.6 milliliters of acetone per 100 milliliters of solution, right? That I could write 9.6 milliliters of acetone per 100 milliliters of solution. Right? Now I got a conversion factor. And I can calculate how much I need. And then let's say I've got a, a graduated cylinder that's up to a liter, right? I pour in that certain quantity of acetone and then fill up to the line. And then I would have my solution, 1,000 milliliter solution. <coughs> so how many is this? 96 probably, right? Somewhere. Okay. Right, so we got four sig figs here, so 96.00 milliliters of acetone. And if you're having a hard time visualizing this idea, let's say you have a large graduated cylinder that goes up to a liter, or 1,000 milliliters. Okay, that's how much solution you want to make. So you take 96 milliliters of this acetone, put it in there, and then add water up to the line. And that would be the volume of your solution. Right? You're not going to subtract this from a thousand milliliters and then add that much water. It won't work out that way. You have to fill. You have to mix the whole thing together and then fill it to the line. Okay, Let's make a solution. All right. How are we doing so far? Right. Pitch it forward. It's a ratio. Do a little calculating, and you can use it to answer a problem. So the last one. Obviously, if all matter has mass, it takes up volume. Some matter happens to be solid at room temperature, and it's not really convenient to measure the volume of it. And some matter happens to be liquid at room temperature, and it is more convenient to measure the volume than the mass. So we also have, and this is the last one, I promise, right? We also have percent uh, mass per volume, okay? Unsurprisingly, it's the mass solute divided by the volume of the solution times 100%. Right? And all of you are somewhat used to this idea. I mean, you make coffee, you add, it's liquid, right? And you add solid sugar to it. Well, at some point, if you're gonna make a, a there's going to be a percent sugar by mass in your coffee, right? Or when we did our labs earlier where we had a certain mass of salt that we weighed out, Measure the volume of the whole thing, right? So let's let's do that for the fun, right? So we wanted to make a five percent, five point zero zero percent sodium chloride mass 
per volume solution. Okay. What will we need to do to make that happen? <coughs> well, if you've got 5%, actually, let's back this up. Let's say you want to make 100 milliliters of a 5%, right? So percentage, we've already got the percentage there, which means we already have our ratio, right? So it's 5%. That means is what? 5.00, uh, we could use this in milliliters, right? This is milliliters, so milligrams. Actually, I'll just go to grams. Grams of sodium chloride per 100 milliliters of our solution. Because right? as we just said, mass divided by the volume, grams per milliliter. 5% grams per milliliters. Does that make sense? Everybody see what I'm saying? Right? So, if that's the case, and I have 100 milliliters of solution, or I want 100 milliliters of solution, right? Then we're going to multiply that and get up with 5.00 grams of sodium chloride is what you would need to add. Now, that was super simplistic, obviously, but you get the idea, right? It's Mass per volume. We got a mass of our solute and a volume of our solution. So there's three different ways, four different ways, but three that we're going to use today to calculate the percent by mass, or excuse me, the percent concentration of a solute and a solvent in some sort of solution. All of these are dependent on context. If you have solids, percent by mass is nice, right? If you have liquids, Percent by volume is nice. If you have solids and liquids, percent by mass per mass over volume, we'll just call it, right? That's nice, just depending on the situation. So you might not have realized it, but most of your days, you've been surrounded by solutions. And that's typically what we call sauces, right? A sauce in your cupboard or in your, standing next to your workstation at work, like tap tea or something like that. Those are all solutions. And they have certain quantities of things in them. And so I, a couple of years ago, uh, not that this is important for anybody, but a couple of years ago I raided my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law, I raided her cupboard, and I took pictures of a whole bunch of sauces that were in there. And so the assignment that we're going to do today is we're going to look at those sauces and then you can read on the side whether it's by mass or by volume or whatever the percentages of things in that sauce. And then we're going to, um, there's some questions underneath it, and you're going to calculate the answers to those questions based on that information on the sauces. I mean, we could go, you can go to another class and do more biological stuff. Here, let me see if I can make this as large as possible. Okay. So, well, we'll try our best. All right. So, <clears throat> I don't know why I can't make this larger. I can't expand it. Anyway, all right. You'll have to look at this on something smaller and zoom into it, right? Unfortunately, I'm sorry about this, but you can look at the general idea here. I have nothing to point to over here. I'm sure I'm butchering this, right? But this is a, I think it's a Shaoxing cooking wine. Okay, and I ask you the volume of alcohol per serving. I want to find out how much alcohol is in a serving. So you need two pieces of information. One is what is the percent alcohol by volume on this thing, right? And the other one is what is the serving size? So if we look at this thing, <laughs> you can't even see it. It's a glare. I feel like it's smaller than that. 15%. Is it 15%? Thank you very much. Sweet. Right, I know it says it on there, I just can't see it because it's deal. Thank you. I know, but for whatever reason, I can't. I wonder if I can move more. 
Oh, there. Maybe that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Still can't see it because the glare, but it says 15% alcohol by volume. Okay, so that's ethanol by volume. So for writing this out, and can I, uh, can I erase this over to get this part down one? So one piece of information we have here is 15% ethanol by volume. So that means it's going to be 15 milliliters of ETOH per 100 milliliters of our solution, which is, of course, the wine. Right, The cooking wine itself is the solution in this case. And so I'm asking you percent total. Uh, so the first one is right the volume of alcohol per serving. So you need to look on the back of the wine bottle. <coughs> yeah, and it says right up here 15 milliliters for a serving. Yeah, thank you. So, all right, 15 milliliters of wine, and use this as the conversion factor we would expect, right? Which is uh, 100 milliliters of wine for every 15 milliliters of ethanol. And that would give you the answer, right? All the information's on the bottles themselves. Now, not every question I ask has something to do with percent by mass or volume or percentage concentration. For example, the next question here, and I assure you, I wrote all these questions while looking at these pictures. So there's no, you can see the information for all of them. Is the total volume of alcohol per bottle? Now, that might seem, might seem like it's, it's outside of the realm of what we were talking about. But what we can remind ourselves is here, this is one serving, right? As we mentioned on the side of the bottle, it says 15 milliliters per serving. So when you're done calculating this, you're going to get milliliters of ethanol per serving. And you'll notice, like most nutrition fact things, it tells you uh, somewhere or on there, it tells you the total. You're not it's reflecting there, I just can't see it. But 45 servings, right? So if you know if there's 45 servings, well then you just multiply this by 45 servings, right? And the servings cancel out and you get that. Okay. I thought this would be more fun than just a bunch of random equations practicing, right? You actually use it for something like the quantity of sodium chloride in your uh, food, or right? in your serving or something like that, or perhaps the volume of ethanol or the total amount of sodium in a bottle of, uh, what is this other one here, Panda brand oyster sauce, which tastes pretty good, by the way. Um, anyway, all these things, right? You just go through and then do the calculation. Now, one last thing that I want to mention, that even though it's written in this lab, uh, consistently over 50% of the people in each of these classes that I've taught this to ignores this, is part of this assignment is taking one of your favorite sauces and looking on the back of it or whatever, four pieces of information about it. You could pick any one, the amount of sodium, the amount of ethanol that's in it, the amount of sugar that's in it, whatever, right? You want an eye opener, find out how much sugar is in a serving of ketchup. It's disgusting, right? Uh, but these are all things that you will calculate in addition to these others. So there's eight of these bottles and then yours is the ninth one, okay? Now it's unfortunate we don't have big computers here in front of us. Uh, but everybody has some sort of device. Perhaps you could zoom in out very tightly and be able to answer those questions with your device or your computer. But that's what we're doing for the rest of today. This is the lab, right? This is the assignment that we're doing. Yeah? Does anybody have any questions? I know I spent a little bit of time talking about the percentage, but that was so that you would be ready. All of these are straight up just taking the information and determining uh, whatever the answer to these questions are. Cool? All right, good talk. See you out there. Go team. Work on the stuff.